Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday webinar series. We're very excited about uh, the opportunity to meet you wherever you're at. And many of you are probably like us, working uh, slash living remote. Uh, and we are doing our part as good civic citizens uh, of Tucson, Arizona. And so our staff is working remotely. Uh, I'm in my backyard, as a matter of fact, and yes, I am one of the brave souls that is outside today. I think it's gonna be 102, maybe 103 today, uh, but I am pretty close to a native. I've grown up in Tucson my whole life, so I'm used to this. So I've got the ceiling fan going. I've got an Arnold Palmer here to sustain me uh, through our webinar, but we're excited to have everybody join us today. I'm gonna to give our participants just a few more minutes to join us on our Zoom call before we kick this off and introduce our partner and friend uh, with Viking Cruises to take you on a journey up the Mississippi and on the Great Lakes, which is a really exciting new destination for Viking Cruises. I'm glad you've joined us for that. Uh, but just to start with some of the preliminaries while we're waiting, if you've never been on a Zoom call before, and this is your first time, or you've been on many, it might be good just to go through a couple of logistics. First of all, we can't see you and no one else can see you. So even if you do have a webcam, it is not on in this format. The only two people you'll see throughout this presentation will be me and Reiner, our partner from Viking Cruises, but primarily you'll be watching uh, a presentation that's on your screen. This is meant to be interactive. And you may say, well, how can that be? How you can interact with us is at the very bottom of your screen in the Zoom call, you'll see two boxes there. One that says Q&A, questions and answers. Another one that says chat. Either one of those boxes are available for you to raise a concern, a question, or an interested, interesting comment that you may have about the presentation about Viking Cruises. Feel free to type in that box, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the presentation, and we'll either answer it in real time in that box, or I'll bring it up at the very end. And at the very end of our presentation today, Reiner and I will go through some of those questions that are raised during the presentation and maybe talk just a little bit more in depth about Viking cruises uh, and maybe even the situation of the world that we're in. We'll table that for, for kind of the end of our presentation here. So you may have questions about the, the global situation uh, that is, is really disrupting all of our lives, but uh, we all are on this call today, I think, for the same reason. And that is you're dreaming big. You're looking to get out of those four walls. Uh, you may have uh, cabin fever like many of us. Uh, so hopefully this is something that you can uh, look to and get excited about. Uh, and we, we would love to just get our presentation started here in the interest of time. So again, I'm Ryan Hansen. I'm the president of Bon Voyage Travel. We're bringing to you every Wednesday a weekly webinar series diving into many destinations, new uh, and, and exciting places, and how to get there when the world opens back up. And so we're excited to have you on. If you're interested in participating in future webinars, go to our website, bvtravel.com, click on events, and you will see the entire month of May, our series of events that will be again every Wednesday at 3 p.m. And we'll be globe trotting uh, every Wednesday, and maybe you'll want to join us. Let's transition. It's time to introduce, and it really is an introduction of more than just our partner here. It's an introduction of something brand new that Viking Cruises is venturing into in the very near future, and it couldn't be better timed. Uh, it couldn't be better positioned. Uh, and I'll let the expert take over from here, not only a friend of ours in the industry, but a tremendous businessman and no one more knowledgeable than Reiner Marks on all things Viking Cruises. Reiner, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. I really appreciate being on here today and talk about this exciting, this exciting new product for 2022. And I will have a hard time <clears throat> hiding my excitement. Um, as we are talking about Viking Mississippi. This has been in the making for a long time. You probably have heard uh, this uh, in articles and in the talks for, for a couple of years now, but with everything Viking, we're not going to launch before we get it right, and before we have all the details ready to go. So without further ado, let's talk Viking Mississippi. And as you can see here, I'm not in St. Louis. No, I'm not. This is the magic of uh, virtual uh, wonders. I'm sitting in my home office too, but let me tell you a little bit about the Mississippi and what we are planning to do in a little less than two years, actually. So Mississippi has been on our radar for quite a while, for a number of reasons, because the Viking approach of, of, of traveling has always been 
uh, the destination. We provide wonderful ships. We we build beautiful ships. We we all know that, and uh, you know you have seen the the images probably in in brochures online in catalogs. Nothing different on Viking Mississippi, but our approach with everything is the destination. Our our will to immerse ourselves into the culture, into the art, into the history of the destination. And that really sets Viking apart and makes it unique, right? The ships are going to be beautiful. We're going to see some, some beautiful uh, renderings of the ship what we're going, that we're going to build. And I'm sure you will uh, agree with me that they're nothing short of amazing. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what Viking uh, has put together for this particular product on the Mississippi and is not very different in our approach than it has been on uh, on Viking uh, in Europe, in China, in Russia, you name it, right? It is a thinking person's cruise again, geared for, for, the, for the curious and experienced tra uh, traveler that would love to meet the locals, would love to learn about the destinations. Right. It is a it is not a paddle wheeler. It is a very modern ship. So very contemporary. You will see uh, as as the as the red line all across our product, it will be a Norwegian Scandinavian design on the ship, a platform to view the beauty of the Mississippi, the beautiful Mississippi Delta, the shores, the, the passing uh, lush green forests up and down this this mighty Mississippi River. Right. Um, we are uh, definitely uh, looking to hire the best staff in the industry and they will be trained by the same people, but by the very same folks that have trained our staff on all of the other products. So this is a Swiss uh, management team that, that works for Viking and that will train all of our staff. So they will be nothing short of amazing. So the ship will be built in America, American crew on board, a true American product, right? Now, when we look at the value, and this is this is important, you know, we as 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 it is destination as important as the value. Uh, when we look at this, very similar um, parameters as as on our all of our other products. The daily shore excursion is and will be included on Viking Mississippi as well. <clears throat> so will be all of our onboard meals, wine, beer, soft drinks every day during uh, during lunch, dinner. We will have also uh, champagne uh, for breakfast available. Included is also the Wi-Fi. So the great news is that we're inside the US. So most, uh, actually all of your phones will work. We don't have to worry about roaming, those kind of things, but Wi-Fi will be included. And uh, our approach to nickel and diming, as we unfortunately see it in the industry, quite a bit is one that we that we avoid that even your port charges taxes those kind of fees are uh, included in that we will not come back to you and ask for more money down the road <clears throat> now this slide I have to explain a little bit in detail because the hardest part these days and we want to be fair is to compare apples to apples right we want to make sure that you understand that there is no bad product out there. But what we want to see, what we want to make sure we understand, we're, we're slightly different. And especially when it comes to the value, I want to make sure that this is not the lowest available price at Viking, right? This is a cabin category, about mid-level mid uh, in the spectrum of cabins that we have compared apples to apples what other companies have out there. So this one right around 5000 for an eight day trip, seven night trip. Um, and uh, in what we do not include, and that's the only thing that really sets us, you know, if you will, apart is that we do not have the pre-cruise hotel night. So when you arrive in the city, you will be picked up for your, uh, to, towards the ship. We'll take care of your suitcases, the transfers, if you have it with Viking, booked with, uh, you know, through Viking, Bon Voyage, through Viking. Um, will be included and then we'll bring you on board take care of your suitcases you have time that day to experience the destination on your own <clears throat> or the, the city that you're boarding the ship but your your tour program starts the very next day oh, this was a little jumpy here we go so for the first year in operation For the first year in operation, we're going to look at four different itineraries. There will be three 
eight day itineraries. They are called the Southern Celebration, the heart of the Delta and um, the American heartland. Uh, the uh, 15, day uh, 15 day itinerary will be called America's Great River. Now, the reason why we have them staggered is because certain areas of the Mississippi are only available to cruise at certain times of the year. For example, the Southern Celebration will going to do mostly during the winter when it's a little bit too cold up north. As the spring progresses, we can go all the way up to Memphis. This will be your eight days, heart of the Delta. And then in the high summer, we will be able to do the America's Heartland all the way up to uh, St. Paul, uh, St. Louis to St. Paul. The positioning cruises the 15 days. There, there were originally only two scheduled, but there was such a a big response and demand on those, so we added a couple more. Uh, have your have your bon voyage travel agent look for you if you're interested, and they can pull up some dates for you. So the first uh, season uh, is already in full swing to sell. Those itineraries are available. Your travel agent can look them up, can look up dates, cabins, and so on and so forth. So this is already in full swing for a couple of week, uh, weeks now. So the itineraries here, Side by side, a little comparison. And again, on the bottom, you see when they are available, some January through mid-June, and then again, mid-October through November, depending on the time of the year where this makes a lot of sense to sail, right? Don't want to spend too much time on here. Just want to give you an overview on ports that we will see in the first sailing season. So here, heart of the Delta, New Orleans to Memphis, and we have America's Heartland, St. Louis to St. Paul. This is the way up in the north, eight days, six guided tours. <clears throat> uh, the Southern Celebration from New Orleans to New Orleans. This will be a round trip. Exciting on this one is that you have an overnight in New Orleans, right? Um, really, really fun trip. And also nice is that you don't have a, a you know, if you will, a, a day of sailing, you will have a port every single day on this particular one. But today, I would like to uh, talk in depth about the America's Great River. And the reason why is that we're having on this particular one, pretty much every port along the way that we're visiting on these shorter ones as well. So I can go down the river and just kind of give you the highlights of the ports that we're stopping at, right? So this one's starting all the way from St. Paul down to New Orleans, uh, pretty much a cruise from the Great Lakes, from the Great Lakes all the way down to uh, the, uh, the Gulf, if you will. So here in St. Paul, uh, you arrive um, on the first day uh, and you will board the ship. The next morning we will sail to Red Wing and here in Red Wing you will have uh, a lot of uh, time at your hand. Oops, this is on autopilot here. So uh, you will have a little uh, free time on your hands. I'm sorry, I need to pause this for a second. Uh, because this this is going a little too fast. My apologies for this. We we did a trial run, but uh, this is uh, going a little too fast for my taste. So here in uh, Red Wing, we're going to stop at the Eagle um, uh, Resort, where you will learn about the American Eagle, and uh, we will also learn about shoe manufacturing here in Red Wing. On our on our day three in La Crosse, we will have a beautiful visit at the museum, the Westerheim Museum. Uh, the Westerheim Museum is an optional tour where we learn about Norwegian immigration. The included tour will be the Rivertown Discovery, a wonderful trip where we learn about La Crosse and historic buildings. Now our day in Dubuque will be uh, all in focus of the steamboat history and the uh, railroad history. Here, we're going to visit the Frank Lloyd Wright Museum, which is his personal residence. Um, and uh, I live here in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. We have the Taliesin, but we don't have this UNESCO World Heritage Museum, his, um, his home, pretty much, right? Uh, Quad Cities, now here, we are going to learn all about the uh, history of the John Deere family. Now, John Deere, with its great impact on the uh, agriculture uh, in the in the destination uh, in America. We learn about the machinery that had a huge impact over the last century and we visit the John Deere homes as well. So really 
focusing on the John Deere family. Burlington the next day, uh, this city came to relative wealth uh, during the steamboat and railroad. Oh, it's just jumping a little, I do apologize. I have to click back every, every now and then. So please bear with me, I apologize for that. So Burlington again came to wealth during the times of steamboat and railroad. Here we're going to visit the historic uh, Burlington small town uh, on our included tour. And of course in the afternoon, a really interesting tour to Fort Madison, which is an, a, a military garrison here on the upper Mississippi. Our next day will be all about Mark Twain. Hannibal, Missouri will be on our program. And again, this is all in relation to the great American writer, Mark Twain, <clears throat> who had quite a colorful life as a pilot, uh, as a pilot on the river, as a miner, and uh, before he became a journalist. So wonderful day in Hannibal, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn will certainly be talked about quite a bit. So our next day, as you can see uh, here behind me and here on this screen, we will spend in St. Louis. And in St. Louis, again, the Anheuser Busch Brewery will be one of our uh, optional tours that we do. Also, uh, we will visit the uh, National Blues Museum. I would actually put it together, do beer and blues together, but um, we'll make it two tours because there's a lot to talk about, right? On our included tour, we will go to the Gateway of the West, I'm sorry, exclude, uh, included Gateway of the West tour, where we uh, will learn about markets, uh, Market Street, the Gateway Arch, and uh, the inner city, the old cathedral, the courthouse, and those kind of stops will be on the way. <clears throat> now, on day nine, we're going to have to do some scenic sailing, some scenic cruising. Doesn't mean that it's going to be uh, you know, less interesting because there will be a lot of activities on the ship. You can attend a lecture. You can, uh, you know, enjoy the beautiful scenery left and right of the Mississippi before we get to Memphis, Tennessee. And here in Memphis, this is a fun-filled day all in, uh, all about music. Of course, we're going to visit Elvis's house. We're going to visit um, his gravesite. But also for those folks that do not necessarily care so much about music, we're going to visit a National Civil Rights Museum. And then uh, on our day 11, we're going to look at scenic sailing again, grab a book, enjoy a lecture on board, or do a cooking class before we get to Vicksburg. Vicksburg has it all. And this is all um, kind of like focusing on the Civil War history where Abraham Lincoln stated that um, this is the key to the South, and boy, was he right, uh, because this was a decisive battle after which the uh, Southern, the Confederate, had to surrender to Ulysses S. Grant. So all about um, the military history, are we going to visit the National Military uh, Park and Battlegrounds and an ironclad ship, the USS Cairo. So... Our next day will be Natchez in Mississippi, and this is an all-American small town. Wonderful tour, uh, focus on beautiful Victorian homes, Victorian style homes that are beautifully preserved. The optional tour, just a little jumpy here. The optional tour will take us for a hosted lunch uh, with a chef to restaurant 1818, where you learn about traditional cooking and traditional cocktails. So very, really, really interesting tour. Sailing further on to Baton Rouge, here in Baton Rouge, we have a um, day that is all about the uh, Cajun cuisine, Cajun cuisine, Cajun culture, storytelling, music, that's all going to happen here in Baton Rouge before, we are uh, before we're sailing to New Orleans, where we end our cruise, where those folks that have an extension will, um, will spend some time um, in, in uh, New Orleans, they will have the included transfer. Uh, those folks that booked, uh, that booked, that took the option of taking the Viking Air, we will have your transfers back to the airport. And um, uh, those folks that have their own arrangements will be free to uh, disembark at their own leisure here in New Orleans. So let's take a look at the beautiful ship. And this is uh, definitely a larger river where we're looking at a, at a vessel that can accommodate way more passengers than on our European ship. Mighty River allows for a larger ship. With, with, the, uh, with the bigger river in mind, with the more depth, the higher bridges, we were able to design a larger ship. Um, and this one is, is absolutely 
something that has that the river hasn't seen before, that this region hasn't seen before. As a logical continuation, you will see a lot of the design elements that we that we have on Viking oceans, that we have on Viking rivers. You will see a lot of the layouts, the different approaches. Um, <clears throat> for us, important is that you even see from the comfort of your restaurant that you see the the shoreline, you see out the windows, but you see it's very, it's the main straight dining venue on board, but not the only one. So there's much more to choose from. Uh, for example, the living rooms. Here in the living rooms, this is an, an open area to, area to relax, unwind, maybe meet some friends, make some friends, talk about your day, and kind of reflect on, on the excursions that you had that particular day, and uh, you know, have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee, whichever day. A time of day it is. So here in the River Cafe up on the sun deck, uh, we are offering some uh, some uh, open air dining in addition to the in addition to the dining room. Now this is all completely free. You choose where you like to dine that day, whether you want outside dining, indoor dining. And the River Cafe offers both indoor and outdoor dining in the River Cafe. Contemporary, uh, very beautiful, beautifully located on the ship. <clears throat> you see what it looks like from the uh, on the interior side of it, right? Beautiful design elements, beautiful bar counter here. Now the aquaviter is a concept that is very well known on Viking oceans and on the European river product also adapted from there. Different layout of course, but here on the aquaviter is our cuisine will be all about the barbecue up and down the Mississippi River, right? Uh, there is from, from the very north to the very south, uh, different kind of barbecues. I mean, from the dry rubs, from the marinades, the, the barbecue sauces, the different woods that you use to choose uh, to, to smoke and flavor your meats. This is, a, for a chef, this this got to be an absolute dream to really let your creative juices flow and, and offer the different flavors of the Mississippi <clears throat> barbecue right up here. So this is another view onto the Aquavit Terrace. Uh, there towards the back of the ship. And uh, let's take a look at the Explorer's Lounge. This is something, again, adapted from Viking Oceans. We have so much space here. We wanted to create a viewing platform from where you can look out over the Mississippi, right? So from the inside here, it might be too warm that day. You sit in here, beautiful climatized, you look out there. And this is actually a two-story viewing platform. Here, this is in daytime, up on the second floor at nighttime do some stargazing, you have a nice conversation, have a little nightcap in the evening. Uh, we have projected the uh, star constellation that are visible uh, here on the divider in the front. So this will be a great, great spot to kind of end the day with friends or alone to just take it all in, right? <clears throat> here on the sun deck, again, a lot of space uh, for us to spread out and to also include a pool. So we have a plunge pool here on the Sun Terrace accessible from the Aquavit uh, Terrace. So from here this, this is an uh, infinity edge pool, really beautiful and goes over the entire length or the entire width of the ship here from left to right. You also see on the roof there some uh, solar panels so a lot of the electricity in the warm water on board will be heated by solar electricity. So the, the ship is uh, is also a very green ship in terms of ecological footprint, it matters. So this is definitely something that will be kept in mind when we build this gorgeous vessel. In the very front of the ship, you have another outside lounge. This will be the bow. And here you enjoy the same view as your captain has it from the captain's bridge. You have a, a 360 degree uh, running track that you can access from here. So for those folks that if we are at sea, you still wanna get some exercise walking, running, you can do that here on the running track. And the bow is, you can see, a beautiful outside lounge to enjoy the beautiful day. Now, for those Viking travelers amongst you that <clears throat> know the river ships, there will be some surprises here when we talk about some new uh, designs and some new cabin categories uh, that we have here on, these, on the Viking Mississippi. So first and foremost, let's start with our entry-level cabins. These are the French balcony staterooms. 300 square feet. This is, if you will, please forgive my uh, approach here. This is as bad as it gets. <laughs> so this, this window will go all the way, all across your, your, your front of the cabin and the door kind of slides open like your patio door would do. 
and uh, it is um, on the bottom of the uh, half will be a glass enclosure and the railing, so it's kind of a safety, uh, so nobody would go overboard, right? But a beautiful viewing platform. In this cabin, as in any other cabin, you will have king size bed um, and heated bathroom floors in all of in all of the cabins. So here you have your veranda and deluxe veranda cabins. These uh, start at 268 square feet. The difference between veranda and deluxe is pretty much the amenities that come with them. So with the veranda, a more basic cabin with a deluxe, you have some upgrades in there, such as a coffee maker, such as uh, uh, binoculars come to mind and a cashmere blanket to kind of huddle up in those beautiful comfy chairs back there. <clears throat> the penthouse veranda, a 324 square foot cabin, very nice size. You have a little bit more room there on the living uh, room area. And also in the penthouse veranda, you have an updated um, uh, mini bar. So here in the mini bar, you will have your alcoholic beverages now. You will have a, a slightly larger bathroom than in the cabins that we have seen so far. The penthouse junior with 400 square feet here, you have uh, even a larger bathroom with double sinks, larger living area that kind of separates from the living room to the bedroom. And of course your full veranda to step outside and enjoy the gorgeous view from the privacy of your veranda. New to the mix is the veranda, uh, is the terrace suite. Now at 425 square feet, definitely more space than uh, the ones that we have seen before with even larger room for living area, bed, uh, bedroom area. You have two TVs uh, for each room, one flat panel TVs. So for those folks that like to watch uh, their news in the morning and so on and so forth, you can do that either in your bedroom or in your living room. <coughs> the Explorer Suites, now this is something that we will have on each deck, right? From deck two all the way up to deck five, on each deck you will have Explorer Suites ranging from 657 square feet all the way up to 1,024 square feet. And um, these uh, offer ample space. There's dining area in here, there's living area in here, and of course your bedroom. So these are really, really nice. And uh, just one word uh, I wanted to mention, Viking cabins have always been and will always be double occupancy. So we don't have any single cabins. All the cabins we have are double. Uh, the First cabin category that I showed you, the balcony, the French balcony cabins, there will be eight cabins that are ADA accessible for Americans with disabilities. We will, we will be able to offer eight of those. And one of these Explorer suites are available for ADA access as well. So here's Viking Mississippi in its beauty and its glory. So this ship is even larger in terms of capacity than our and then our ocean vessels, our, <laughs> forgive me, our expedition vessels. So uh, very, very good crew to guest ratio. So uh, quite, a, quite a number of guests that we will be accommodated here on this beautiful Viking Mississippi. So um, as Ryan uh, mentioned that we're gonna get a little glimpse this, I want to view this as a teaser for maybe a future presentation that we will, uh, that we could talk about would be uh, our, newest member of the family are expedition vessels. And these vessels are, again, absolutely fantastic, slightly smaller than the one that we just looked at in terms of capacity, really state of the art, and this is what they're going to look like. So Viking Polaris and Octantis, not only will we uh, go to the polar regions, we will also go into the Great Lakes. And um, I've been asked to, to mention those in a little bit. So here are the Great Lakes again the largest freshwater ecosystem on earth and we're going to do these sailings in 2022. We're, we're able to access the lakes through the Welland Canal. So the, the expedition vessels have been built narrow enough to fit through the canal and we're going to bring them from New York all the way to Toronto before we pass them through the canal near Niagara. So I have a couple of these uh, first year itineraries for you and again these are all available for sale. If you have questions. If you would like to have more details, please call your Bon Voyage Travel Advisor. They have all the information to, to uh, 
to inform you and can look up pricing, can look up availability for you. So that's all available. So the first and longest is our 13 day. It goes from New York all the way up to uh, Toronto into Lake Ontario, touching on Saguenay, on Quebec City, uh, before we ending the cruise in Toronto. So this will be a 13 day, if you will, positioning cruise into the Great Lakes. Uh, and then we have our eight day uh, sailings from Toronto all the way to Milwaukee, touching mostly on uh, Michigan ports. So this will be your, your eight day Niagara and the Great Lakes. The second eight day will be the Great Lake Explorer from Milwaukee to Thunder Bay. Now here we have a couple of Canadian ports in there. And uh, let me spill some beans here. The reason why this would be not only beautiful from, from, a, from a viewing point in terms in terms of wildlife, in terms of history of these cities. There has, there, there has been quite some history here that is not much talked about. There has been some naval battles here, right? There's some shipwrecks down there and we're going to visit them, not from above. We have some submarines on these expedition vessels that are built to go and do dives with passengers. They're state of the art and I would love to uh, explain that uh, to you in, a different, in another presentation. So these uh, we're going to use not only to look at wildlife, but also at some of these uh, shipwrecks here in the Great Lakes. And the visibility has got to be amazing. This is all fresh water, right? So no doubts about that. But again, this will be the topic of a different uh, presentation here. So from Thunder Bay, our last but not least, our uh, undiscovered Great Lakes leaving from Thunder Bay and then sailing back to Milwaukee will be our third eight-day uh, tour. So. This is again a rendering of Viking Octantis and Polaris. They will be launched in 2022. So we can't wait. We're super excited about this amazing new product and we hope you are too. So just to give you a little bit of information of what is currently out there, you have probably noticed uh, much less brochures coming to your house. I mean, this would be a kind of a mute point now for 2020, but uh, very soon we will start picking up, talking about 21, 2022. There are some amazing pricings out there as you are used to uh, free round trip air, you know, for, for sailings and heavily discounted. And that will be a pattern on Viking. We will continue that to do so. Viking has been for over 20 years, a very cost efficient operator. And these, these pricing advantages, we will, for, we will forward to you in terms of uh, greatly priced cabins, heavily discounted air. And one thing I wanted to mention before handing over back to Brian is that we have in place our risk-free guarantee. So up to 24 hours uh, prior to departure, you are free to cancel your sailing risk-free. This is really something to make you feel good about your purchase, not worrying about it. Risk-free means risk-free up to 24 hours prior to departure. You can still cancel and uh, and make different travel arrangements afterwards without any penalties imposed. So I think that is all I have at this point. Ryan, I think we have a couple of questions. Uh, we definitely do. Thank you for uh, inspiring us and to really thinking about uh, you know new destinations. Uh, I do want to address a couple of them. You spoke a little bit about it, but let's just <laughs> make sure that we clarify this king size beds in the rooms but they can be split so if it's uh, two people that would like their own bed they those king size beds do split correct yes absolutely that is that is very easy for us to do you don't have to make arrangements prior or if you forgot to do so very easy for us to split them for you we can put nightstands in the middle sometimes it's you know dad and son traveling or you know we, we can easily make that happen that's that's yep. on any on any of our products right correct and uh, speaking of uh you know different types of travel solo travel is becoming very popular you did mention that the way vikings business model is set up is that all cabins are set up and designed for double occupancy can you speak to uh solo travelers just in general are they welcomed on board does it is it an atmosphere of of welcoming and they they should have no problems i know the answer to this <laughs> so just to make sure that the pricing 
questions that could be out there for solo travelers. What can they expect from a pricing standpoint? And just got a, a question here in regards to cabin occupancies. Do you have any cabins that can, can hold more than just double occupancy or does that require additional cabins? Right. No, that, that's, I treat it as a twofold question. So I, I, I start with the first. We do not have the single cabin. So if a single traveler would like to purchase the cabin, you would, you would buy the cabin uh, as a, in its entirety. So if the per person pricing is 3,500, your pricing would be 7,000 uh, 7, to, to purchase the, the cabin. You would, you would pretty much take up the space of the cabin on your own, which is fine. We see, we see quite a number of passengers do that. And again, the atmosphere is very inclusive. We, we welcome everybody on board. We have ages. What you don't see, and, and that has not changed, you don't see uh, young families with, with little kids. Ryan and you, uh, you and I, were in the same uh, boat, if you will. We have little ones. Right. So our kids need to be over 18 to go on a Viking cruise, but if it's more than two passengers, they would have to add on cabins. There is no connecting doors, no connecting balconies. It is a product, uh, the average, and, and let me let me go over this for a second. The average age, I want to say, is about 50, 55. You know, you will see some folks in their 30s. You will see some folks in their 80s and everything in between. But the, the majority of travelers are close to retirement. In retirement doesn't mean that, that the, the one-off uh, honeymoon couple in their late 20s will not be on board. Of course, you're going to see them as well. But again, it is not so much the age. It is the approach to learning, to learning about hard art history culture that connects people right and it doesn't matter how old they are if they're 80 or 18 doesn't matter um but they have to be at least 80. okay yeah there's a popular theme here in regards to cabins and cabin sizes uh by and large if i heard you correctly the new ships that are going to be deployed on the mississippi and the great lakes those cabins are by and large bigger uh, than the, than most of the cabins that people would experience on a Viking river ship in Europe. Can you, you talked about square footage of the, of, yes. the, of the cabins. Can you maybe touch on that again? Yes, the smallest cabin would be your veranda and deluxe veranda, 269 square feet. Your French balcony, and that's pretty much the entry level cabin at 300 square feet. That, this is ample space. This is about the size, I want to say, of a, of a two room suite on the long ships. You know, so these cabins, when it comes to the deluxe veranda and the veranda cabins, these are inspired by our ocean, uh, ocean ships. And that is the same size as we feature them on our ocean vessels. And I speak from experience. They're absolutely fantastic. Plenty of space uh, for two travelers to store their belongings away, enjoy the seating area. Those are really, I look forward to, to see this product in, in real. I mean, I don't think the Mississippi or many of us have seen anything similar to that. All right, yeah, and uh, you had mentioned that some of the cabins are fitted and set uh, for ADA requirements. So when you say that, that means the ADA requirements are followed throughout that stateroom from uh, railings and hand-holding in the bathrooms and sizes and where things are placed. So if someone heard the, fur the phrase ADA, you are following those policies. When you say a, a cabin is ADA certified, it really it follows those criteria, correct? 100%. Uh and that is, I want to say, a feedback that we've gotten throughout the years. Europe being a little, little bit difficult for ADA uh, travelers, but here in America, we, we definitely have the ability to to accommodate travelers with ADA needs. That doesn't only limit um, accommodations in the cabin. You have it in the public restrooms uh, on the ship. You will have it in the restaurants on the ship. You will have it all throughout the ship. The pool will be ADA accessible. All these things that go with it, they are in place. How deep is the pool? Good question. We'll have to look that up. <laughs> you got yeah, me on I, I mean, I don't plan on diving head first, but you never know. Some people, I guess maybe the concept is, is, it's, is it a glorified hot tub or would you say it's, it's really a, a small pool? Thinking about what we have on Viking Oceans, you can swim in that one. The, okay. the very similar concept that we have uh, where you have that pool on deck, nine, eight, forgive me, uh, which is an infinity edge pool too, uh, which I think goes from four to five and a half feet. So you can comfortably swim in there. 
Great, great. Are the bathrooms in the state rooms, are they, they all fitted with just stand up showers? Are they shower tub combos? Are they standalones? What's the primary configuration? Uh, these will be as far as I know. I know for sure in the entry level cabins all the way up to the penthouse will be showers. Let me get back to you on those uh, higher end cabins, the uh, uh, Explorer Suites, because the Explorer Suites on Oceans, they do have tubs. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't seen pictures of those yet. Again, a lot of this uh, we haven't seen either because it's so young. You know, we, we think right. we have gotten the full training on it. We're just excited to share the, the pictures on that. <laughs> oh, I agree. And, and uh, would you argue or not argue, would you, you've said it maybe three or four times is that a Bon Voyage travel advisor, as time goes by, will be very up to date and have this information uh, as people want to know it and you guys uh, are able to release it. Uh, an advisor at Bon Voyage would be a place to start. Absolutely, 100%. We uh, just uh, had a wonderful turnout on our on our training that we've done. We, we talked about an hour about this new product, all the details. And we do that, we do that uh, quite frequent you know, to update the product and inform the travel advisors. So what I know, the travel advisors at Bon Voyage will have the same access to the same information. And uh, if there is a question, you, there's always the one-off question, how many steps from this deck to deck. If we need to find out, they have my number on speed dial, we can find it out really quick. When's the, uh, the Mississippi River? What's, it's 2022, but what's the first sailing? And they're starting uh, in, in, in 2022, I know, but when's the first sailing? They will be in the spring. In the spring, perfect. Yeah. So, it, it, with that said, these ships are bigger and then will have a larger capacity than what a a experienced Viking river cruiser would have seen on a European river. So, I do know there's more capacity. But fair to say that yeah, the sense of urgency for booking now is there that people are snatching up these these beds quickly. Most certainly, Ryan. This is this is absolutely true. Um, when we look at 2021, because a lot of the people that were booked in 2020 have moved their bookings to 2021. So for us to open up 2022, including Mississippi and Expedition, was A, something we wanted, on the second foot, something we needed to do because we need to continue selling, right? And uh, so Mississippi is filling up nicely. Uh, we've seen the first, I want to say the first Six sailings in the Great Lakes are solid booked. So the product is already selling for a couple of weeks or there. Even though it's two years out, I would definitely, you know, if you if you're always planning to do that, look look into booking fairly soon. As it always as yeah, as it always is, remember what it was with Viking Oceans a couple of years ago. The first sailing season sold out like this. We we barely could put out brochures and the first season was sold out. <laughs> Shameless plug here, if somebody went to book directly with Viking, they're not gonna get a better deal by booking with directly with Viking versus Bon Voyage, would they? Not at all. And that's really a pattern with Viking. We offer the same conditions. Uh, and, and I always have, I'm always in favor of booking through a travel agent because you get the expertise, you get that, the expertise, you get that personal touch, you have, uh, a person in your neighborhood, I think that's the biggest advantage to be able to to reach out, to ask questions where when you call us direct, it, you may or may not call the same person over again. I mean, the call centers are 500 people and the likelihood of you talking to the same person is, is slim to none. Uh, that's, we appreciate that. And I know that was a little shameless plug, but that's why we're partners in this together to, to share the, the knowledge and information. If you could go back over, because I think this is a really good point. Viking has done a great job uh, in my recollection here of being as consumer friendly as possible prior to the global pandemic, but through this pandemic has, has tried to do his best, its best job of making sure that passengers, book passengers have as much flexibility, as much time to make a decision, not to rush to something because a final payment deadline that is months ahead of a departure. Could you just go over again one time uh, the policy that's in place right now? If I book by May 31st, what advantage do I have in that 24 hour cancellation policy? And do I get it in future travel credit? Do I get a refund? How is that figured out? That, that, that is very true. So 
I think this is a great offer. So anything booked before uh, May 31st will enable you, if you are booked for uh, uh, April 22 and uh, heaven forbid a foot gets broken or you know any, any kind of situation arises, you can cancel that booking. There's no penalties, whether that's next year or the year, the following year. Uh, the, uh, the booking will be, uh, and that's based on, based on the client's wish. We can either rebook the client to a, uh, to a future cruise, or we can give them, or we will give them a future cruise voucher that then can be applied when they are ready to go again, because, you know, we know hardship happens, hard times can happen, uh, will be given as a future cruise voucher. Over the full right. amount, there will be no monies withheld. It will be for the full That's amount right. that the client spent. Yeah. Well, and just for the edification of our listeners, uh, that is as pro-consumer as there is in the marketplace right now, <clears throat> having that 24-hour window. There are other competitors of yours and other cruise partners out there of ours uh, that have policies that have become more consumer-friendly, but not up to 24 hours. Many of those are within 30 days or two weeks. So kudos to Viking for for stepping up in a consumer you. way, uh, considering the circumstances uh, that we're under right now. As somebody did ask this question, we're kind of getting to the end of our Q&A here. We want to be respectful of all of uh, our time, uh, especially our, our presenter here, Reiner. But somebody did ask, and boy, this is a great question. Can you take back-to-back -back cruises on the Great Lakes? Are, th are they set up and designed for that? Have you, you seen that opportunity available? I think that's a great question. I haven't thought of that, but absolutely no they the way this works you you arrive in you arrive in toronto the ship will disembark you have the new clients come on the same day for the folks that do in the back to back it will be a long day in toronto and off you go to the next to the next eight days absolutely it's possible we we've seen those back to backs on oceans on rivers that's a very common thing for us to do yeah, it's a, it is very common. And I will say this, just on a personal note, if I was on one of your Mississippi River uh, itineraries, you would have to have security in Memphis to drag me out of the Rock <laughs> restaurant. That's my favorite barbecue place in the country. So you, you might have trouble getting me back on ship. I have a feeling with the great food uh, up and down the Mississippi, that might be a common theme uh, is trying to drag people back to the ship so that we can go to the next destination. But I wanted to to take this opportunity to thank you, Reiner. Thank you for joining us today and presenting uh, a fantastic opportunity uh, that is close to home for people. It's untapped and it, for my money, it's gonna be really good value on the Mississippi River based on the other supplier partners that are out there. Viking's gonna do it consistently time in, uh, time and time again. If you've ever sailed with Viking, you know that that is one of their hallmarks. When you, when you book a Viking cruise, you know what you're gonna get and they will deliver on that value uh, over and over. So thank you for, for doing that and the consistency uh, in the market. Thanks for joining us to all of our attendees today. Many of you are our clients. Thank you for your business. Uh, we hope to be traveling soon and we're here to plan your next adventure. So contact your travel advisor. They are working. They are ready to book your next trip. And Reiner's right. 2021 bookings are coming fast and furious. So make sure you provide yourself as much flexibility and opportunity uh, by booking that in advance. Uh, and I also just wanted to pass along, if you're not one of our cons uh, clients consistently and you don't know who to contact, just call our number 520-797-1110 and you'll be able to be contacted and reach out to one of our travel advisors. We had one last question I'd like to make sure that everybody knows, because I think this is important for Viking. Uh, Reiner, if I book any product and I decide to cancel and take a future cruise voucher, I can use that voucher on anything and everything that you sail. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Yes. <clears throat> so I love that where if I booked this Mississippi river and I decide, you know what, Europe's back open. I want to transfer that to a, a cruise in Europe. I could take all of that money and move it to a, a European river cruise. I could move it to an ocean cruise and, or when expedition comes out, if that's my, my flavor, uh, I could move it to that. So I think that's a great benefit that you guys can offer is a varied experience. If maybe one of these cruises has to be canceled, uh, they can move it to a number of different opportunities. So Reiner, thank you, my friend, for joining us. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me.
All right, we're going to sign off. Good to see everybody. Take care. Have a great evening.